Hey, hi, hello and welcome to the second video in our series where we build a complete ChatGPT iOS application. In our previous one, I showed you how to implement email and password authentication with Firebase so that you can actually create and store these chats on Firebase and then be able to basically bring them back, create different users and make a more scalable application. So let's start building our chat list view and then go on to build our chat view. I'm going to create a new folder, so a new group, and this is going to be our chat list and create a new file. Swift UI view, chat list view. We'll go ahead and create a new chat list view model. I'm going to make the chat list view model class and then make sure that conforms to observable object. We then want to create a chat list state and this will show us whether or not the chat list is loading our chats or has no results. So we'll have a chat list state and we're going to say loading no results results found and then let's go ahead and create our app chat model so our struct app chat of type codable and identifiable and let's say id of type string we're also going to annotate this with the document id property wrapper once we bring in firebase and pretty much work with that so let's create that we're going to have a topic for the chat which is also of type string the model for now, we'll make this a type string, but we're going to change that to a chat model when we bring in the open AI library. Also last message sent, and this will be date. We'll also create a custom date type for Firebase. I'll show you why we need to do that later on in the video. And the final field is going to be owner. And this is going to be the user's ID for the person that's creating this chat. That way you'll be able to actually show the user their chats and then manage everyone else's chats if you have multiple people using the app. So if I sign in with my user ID, I only want to see my list of chats, obviously not everyone else's, also privacy. Now, what I want to do is create my own custom chat model type. The reason I'm going to do that is because there is some information that I want to store based on different types. So let's create a struct chat model. Now I want this to conform to a few things, string, codable, identifiable, and hashable. I'm then going to create my two cases. So I'm going to say GPT 3.5, turbo and then also GPT-4. I realized I annotated this as a struct, but I want this to be an enum. So we have this as an enum. And then I'm going to say this is GPT-3.5 turbo GPT-4. And I also want to give it a tint color for my UI. So I'm going to say tint color of type color. And I run a switch. So if it's GPT 3.5, I'm going to return green. And if it's GPT 4, I'm going to return purple. If you've used the pro version of ChatGPT, you'll notice that that's pretty much the colors they use for these two. And of course, we don't have Swift UI imported into this. So I'm going to import Swift UI. And I realized we actually don't want identifiable. What, what we do want is case iterable. So that way we can iterate through these chat models. Let's go back to this and change this from string to chat model. And then now let's jump into our chat list view model. So here we're going to create a function fetch data and then add our published var chats of type app chat. And for now, I'm just going to say self dot chats is equal to and just create a sample list here. So like app chat and then just pass in a random ID some topic, the model for this one will be GPT 3.5, make the date now and the owner one, two, three. I'm just going to copy this, duplicate it, make another one down here. ID will be two, some other topic. This will be GPT four, last message sent and owner will be also one, two, three, because same person. We also want to publish the loading state. So we're going to say bar, loading state is equal to this is published is equal to type chat list state and that's going to be equal to loading because of course at the beginning our app is going to be loading now we can jump over to our list view and start building our chat list view so what we want to do is we want to create a group so we can manage the conditional and then bring in our state object 
which is going to be view model and that's going to be equal to chat list view model and then we can do a switch on our view model dot loading state so if it's loading we're going to display text that says loading chats and then we're going to say if no results are found we'll just copy this and we'll say no chats and then of course if we have our results found we're going to create a list to display all of our chats now what we're going to do is iterate over all of the chats so i don't know why i'm in caps lock but let's go here and we'll say view model dot chats and for our chat this is where we're going to create each of our chats now we want to wrap all of our chats in a navigation link because every time we click on a chat it's going to take us to the chat view so we'll wrap this in a navigation link with a value and the value is going to be chat dot id and then we'll create our label which will be a v stack make sure the v stack alignment is leading get rid of this content here if we have a look at our preview now we can see that it's loading chats and that's because we haven't actually shown any of the chats so what we need to do is just say on appear we'll say if view model dot loading state is equal to let's actually jump over and create a none state so and we'll change this to none and then go back to our chat list view so if it's equal to none then we're going to say view model dot fetch data and wait for that to load now and then also if it's none we'll have the loading state as well and we should basically see an empty view now oh yeah i realized the reason we don't see the empty view is because we haven't actually changed the state so after we set the chats we're going to say self dot loading state is equal to results found now we go back to our chat list view and we should see an empty view because we haven't put anything here okay so i noticed that what's happening is it's actually not updating on the preview but if i build and run so if i go ahead and i build and run you can actually see that it shows the two stack items for our chats so i'm just going to be using the simulator because preview is not working for some reason so inside the v stack i'm going to create the top row and that's going to have an h stack that's going to have text on the left and that'll show the chat dot topic and if there is no topic i'm going to say new chat what that means is i need to go ahead and make topic optional and that's because at first when we first create a chat there is actually going to be no topic and the topic only gets generated after the user starts interacting with gpt it will then run another generation that will determine what the chat topic is and assign that to the topic like i said we're building a full app for chat gpt so let's go ahead and continue here i'm going to make the font headline pop a spacer in between that and then create another text item and this is going to have the chat dot model and also this will be dot raw value and i do want this to also be optional because we can have no model at the beginning and if it doesn't exist i just want it to be empty the font is going to be caption 2 foreground style foreground style is going to be chat dot model dot tint color otherwise it's just white and the background color is also going to be chat dot model dot tint color otherwise dot white and we'll grab all of this pop it in here and say opacity 0.2 or maybe one the last thing we want to do is corner radius so clip shape capsule style continuous i think the only thing i want to do here now is actually just add padding of like six and then make a font weight of like semi bold one thing that i like to add is a time ago string i actually just got chat gpt to generate this code honestly uh, and what i do is in my chat i'm just going to create a var last message time ago and this is of type string you can actually copy this code or get it generated by chat gpt but basically i take the date i grab the components of that date and i actually iterate through all of the time units so year day month hour minute and second and based on that i then generate a string that shows me if it was like 10 seconds ago five minutes ago and it's sort of like how instagram or twitter or any of the social media channels show you how long ago a message was sent so i actually get so i actually get this and i'll use the last message sent date 
And so I can actually use the last message time to go string. This is the code if you want to grab that. So I'm kind of pause the video here. Jump back to our chat list. And over here, I'm going to go and add a text below the H tag. And this is going to be the chat dot last message time ago. And the font for this one is going to be caption and the foreground style is going to be gray. I'm going to build and run and see what this looks like. And it looks like we have a pretty nice UI. I can go ahead and click this, but nothing really happens. And this is what our chat list view looks like. Now, of course, for our view, we do want to add a navigation title. And this is going to be chats. And then we want a toolbar. And then the toolbar is going to have two things. One button that lets us create a new chat. And the second one that lets us show our profile view. The profile view is going to have nothing other than a text field that lets you add in your OpenAI API key. The way we're going to build this is actually not store the API key in the code, but let our users add their own API key. It's up to you how you manage the API key, but that's how I'm going to build it in this video. So let's go ahead and create a toolbar item with our placement. And I want this one. The placement is going to be navigation bar trailing, and it's going to be a button. We'll leave this empty. Let's have a look. Let's grab from here. It's going to be a person. Yeah, let's grab this one. That's the one we want. And then I also want another toolbar item. Same thing, except this one is going to be pencil. Let's say like this. And this will be create chat. And now to be able to manage our navigation views, we need to create a navigation stack and a navigation path. So we'll go into our app state and this will keep track of the navigation path. So published via navigation path. And this will also let us navigate programmatically. And so we can say navigation path. And then I'll jump into the application. So in the video app here. And what I'll do is I'll create a navigation stack with a path. And the path is going to be app state dot navigation path. And the root is going to be chat list view. And I also want to give it the application state because we will be using that in there as well. Oh, I realized I need to add the dollar sign for it to be binding. I now have the chats list and this button here and then one to also create a new chat. I want to add the ability to delete a chat. So let's add our swipe actions. We go to our chat list view, jump over here in our for each, go to the end of the navigation link, say swipe actions, pop in the content. I'm going to then add in a button with a role destructive. And then we have a label with the word delete and a system image trash dot fill. And this is going to say view model dot delete chat and pass in the chat, but obviously we don't have that function. So let's go to the view model and head over here, say func delete chat, pass in a chat of type app chat, and then we'll let that handle here. We also want a function that says create chat, and then also a function that says show profile and to manage whether or not the profile is being shown, we're going to go to inside here, make sure we have a published variable, say is showing profile view. And obviously this is going to set to false at the beginning. This function here is then going to say is showing profile is equal to true. And let's connect the view up here. This obviously connects to deleting the chat. And then our view here, this is going to say view model dot show profile and then where we create a chat we're going to also say view model dot create chat i just need to change the annotation here so delete chat and pass in the chat because it has an annotation make sure that builds and runs and of course it does if i swipe over i then have the ability to delete this but it obviously does nothing yet really from like logic perspective if i just run this again it'll still exist we do want a way to now pop over to the next view. So let's quickly create our chat. So new group, and this is going to be for chat and a new file. We'll go ahead and create a chat view. And let's also create a new group and this will be for profile. Go ahead and create a profile view. And what we're gonna do is jump over to our chat list view. 
Then under here, we want to create a sheet and we want to use the one that says is presented. And in our case, it's going to be presented for view model dot is showing profile view. Of course, we need to make sure that this is binding. And then this sheet is going to show our profile view. And then the other thing we want to have is a navigation destination. And this is going to take in, let me just fix the spelling up here. And this is going to take in a string dot self and the destination is going to say chat. We're going to have chat ID. And in our case, we're going to say chat view and pass in the view model in it chat ID and pass in the chat ID. And what this is going to do is create a navigation destination of type chat view based on the chat ID. So each chat will actually have its own chat view. And quickly before it starts, oh, it already screamed at me, but let's go ahead and in our chat view, we want to create our chat view model for here. Chat view model. And this is going to take in a chat ID of type string. So that's already set up here. So we pass that in to this. And then also now we want the chat view to have a chat view model. So we're going to say var view model of type chat view model. And let's quickly build and run to see which errors we have. It seems like here chat view model has no initializers. So I'm actually just going to add the init chat ID of type string self dot chat ID equal to chat ID build and run that. And again, something's failing. Why is that? Oh, preview. Let's just quiet down our preview build and run. And now it's succeeded. Let's have a look. Shows our profile view. Amazing. And if we go to click on our chat, it shows us our chat view, which is so good. And now we're ready to start building our chat UI. So we're going to be building our chat UI in another video. So I will catch you in that next one. Peace. I don't care about your stories. I don't care.